Very glad you're here. Uh, the schedule for today, I will do a little short intro just to scope the problem place. And then we'll have a few reviews of games that we thought would be appropriate for the evening. A demo of VR at the end, uh, cast off from uh, Teesside University. Uh, a little panel, and then at the end our students will do a short uh, presentation of their current projects at Middlesex University. Right, so just to tell you who we are, there's quite a few new faces. So Cyber Salon, it's a joint research body between Siberia Cafe and Hypermedia Research Center, funded back in 1997 when we realized that internet is exciting, but it's also very disruptive uh, and probably will cause no end of problems. So you can say that we woke up early and we covered quite a lot of difficult topics like net politics, games, digital rights, and at the moment, digital hate. So Siberia was the uh, first internet cafe, which is actually 25 years since we started, which is amazing. But uh, if you see the computers, they were just massive computers because it was heavily populated by gamers. And downstairs, we had this basement called Sub Siberia where people from Richard Bartlett group were running the minimats. So multiplayer user dungeons and games which were already addressing what's wrong with society. So the early games, uh, text-based games, were fantasy games because both uh, Richard, one of the founder of MATS, and his partner uh, were both working class guys who were just not very happy with what was happening at the university. And I was trying to create the future world that would not be class-based. And some of the early games were very much touching on the hate between the classes. So when you go back to the maths, you can see that they are contextualized in a class conversation. But what we're talking about today is a really very specific uh, breakdown of uh, harmony within society. So the big explosion of hate, which happened in about March 2016, uh, which kind of had two flanks. One is uh, anti-Eastern European focus and also Islamophobia. So when you remember what was going on in the early Brexit stages, a lot of Polish people got beaten up. One was killed, unfortunately. And all of that was by very young people, teenagers, 15-year-olds, 16-year-olds. Uh, so that was a new thing because obviously football hooligans were of that age. Uh, but Brexit really brought uh, to hate new demographics, very, very young demographics. Everybody was worried about Nigel Farage attacking Muslim community and Daily Mail, you know, stalking hate since 1933 was very much part of it, using words like betrayal, treason. This first slide is back from 1933, the famous enemies of the people, which Daily Mail then rerun during Brexit. So Daily Mail has formed in hardcore far-right fascism. Uh, we get blamed in technology that this is all Facebook's and YouTube fault, but we can see where the real enemies of the people are, which is Daily Mail editors. But what happened then, Joe Cox was murdered by an old person. So Thomas Alexander Moy was 52. So that was slightly different demographics and probably more to do with Daily Mail than with online, because he just did not look like the guy who was on YouTube. Uh, so when we started thinking about it, what is the media breakdown between these two groups? So if you look at the average age of far-right killers, it's about 25, 27, and the incident in New Zealand, Brandon Tennant was 28. We're not quite sure what's happening in Utrecht, but they look quite young as well. So, so obviously the core violence and the core hate happens to fall around the sort of mid-twenties, but the older people not excluded from it. So where does it leave us in terms of the game? We're obviously looking at what this younger demographic is actually doing with themselves. You see from the spending patterns that the number of people playing games has been going up and up and up. So there is obviously an, an opportunity there where games are the medium where the younger community spends more time than in front of everything else. So does it mean that we could open it up and use the medium in a constructive and positive way? Uh, but I think what it needs from us is to step back a fraction. 
we don't often talk about hate. Hate is considered a taboo in a polite society. We very rarely hear people talking about hate. So we looked back, you know, hate has been with us since ever. Greek myths have got plenty to say about Ares, goddess of hate. And she's always terribly sexy and very seductive and in a kind of very Greek way, very emotional. And I think that's a conversation that we can open up to games because obviously we know love and hate being both quite irrational, but we know quite a lot about different types of love. We seem to know very little about hate. Hate has not been classified. So we started looking at, you know, what hate comes with. So these are the children of hate in Greek myths. So hardship, pains, anarchy and ruin. But also it's quite exciting. It could be quite sexual. It could be quite seductive. It could be quite addictive. You know, the apple, the apple in the fairy tales comes from Greek myths. So temptation of the apple by hate and then some horrible things happen. So unfortunately, apple was indicated in it. I don't know if the guys who used Apple for technical companies knew, but <laughs> obviously there is something. The K is beginning of the Greek word for hate. So when we look at different types of hate, we also started looking at different kind of media used to incite hate. And it's very recently has been linked to new technologies because something which I didn't know about, during Nuremberg rallies where the fascists really consolidated the power, the rallies were pioneering in the use of public announcement system where you can really get the crowd going and roaring and you can actually have a crowd of up to 700,000 people uh, where before, you know, without the public announcement system, you could barely talk to more than 20. So the new technology exploited unbelievably well by German propaganda has helped to put the sense of crowds and excitement together. So that didn't happen by itself. Technology has definitely played a role in getting us into direction that, you know, really rationally nobody would have gone before. So these new media have got form in creating hate and hate conducive environments. If you move to new media as we know it, Twitter, by a daily stalking hate and inciting violence from ever present Mr. Trump, slowly, slowly people started getting this sort of daily five, six, seven messages of hate in their feed. So increasing the frequency of, of hate experience, which normally would happen to people, you know, maybe once a year, maybe occasionally, but Twitter brought hate right into everybody's faces. Uh, making people aware of this negative energy. So unfortunately, the only people who have something to say about hate are not very nice characters. So Nietzsche is the one who spent probably most time thinking about hate. You might value his philosophy, but he wasn't a nice guy for sure. Uh, but we reach to him because he spent fair amount of time pondering on different types of hate. And when we go with the games, we're interested in not every type of hate because we're only a small research group and we can't hack everything. But if you look at different types of hates, contempt of those with less strengths, hatred of equals, where there is a chance of a win, and fear of those with more strength. So it's kind of hate and strength are very much included. And also the hate, the most important for us today is hate of unnatural and external things. Hate of people who are hate worthy, which uh, Nietzsche talks about displacement hate, that instead of hating one person who causes you pain, you project it on the whole lot of people that the person is from. So I think this is the kind of hate that we can deal with within the game environment, because that displacement, irrational as it is, is an experience and a bias that we can probably hack. So this is an example of it, one of my favorite stories, where the Hungarian person who suffered during the Russian revolution in Hungary, he lost his brother to the revolution, killed by Russian army, and then found himself as a uh, diver, scuba diver, in uh, somewhere in Indonesia, I think. And he finds this capsule which drops from the sky, and the capsule is a cosmonaut, who Russian cosmonaut, who landed in slightly wrong place. And there is this very tense scene when uh, the character called Tibor can see the Russian insignia and the Russian cosmonaut, but because he lost brother to the Russians in the 56 war, he plays for time and delays time until the cosmonaut runs out of air. The cosmonaut dies. 
But when they open the capsule, and it's, this is the Russian cosmonaut smart girl who recorded the conversation, so then they realized that Tibor knew she was going to die and let her die. But the conclusion of the book, in a typical Arthur C. Clarke, is that, well, actually, nobody likes Russians anyway, so we'll just let it go. So it's just this bizarre combination of which he picked very well, of displacement hate and the consensus changing that justifies his behavior. So these are kind of, you know, daily hates that we can probably deal with. But the one that games approach is the hate with fear, which mostly comes from ignorance and fears of one's own insecurity, of lack of control, where we develop defensive thoughts out of ignorance. So those of us who were here in 2010 remember that Facebook wasn't a vehicle for hate. Facebook was a vehicle for salvation and for Egyptian revolution, uh, where everybody signed up the names um, to support with solidarity of the murdered Egyptian. So, you know, media possibly is neutral, and we certainly have seen media on the good and the bad side. Are games neutral? We don't know, but we'd like to evaluate the opportunity of how we can attack that one small part of hate, which comes from ignorance and lack of understanding of others. So today we're going to look at four, a, a few different examples where the games are trying to explore the words of the other and how the richness of the games can transport us in an emotional way to the reality of the other.